Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Gary here, Fathers for Justice, 2nd of September 2021, the Unconstitutional Children's Act. So, in essence, I have been doing this work for close on 17 plus 18 years now. And we have been saying that the Children's Act is biased towards fathers. It's taken me uh, sitting down with the Center for Gender Equality when they did the research last year. And outside of Sonki Gender Justice, um, there was nobody, no other participant in that, based on the report, let me be clear about that, based on the final report that could have pointed it out to, to them, that the Children's Act was unconstitutional. That section 19, 20 and 21 are unconstitutional. You are differentiating between people. You differentiating based on their, their sex and you are prejudicing them based on their sex. And in un, under section 21D, you're prejudicing them on based on their color. So section 19, 20 and 21 are sexist, they're biased, and they're racist. It's that simple, guys. So it's no longer a dispute for us. It's no longer, we have the clarity. And the bottom line is, is that we must insist that the government now hear fathers, because we've been telling, we've been telling you as Fathers for Justice for 17 odd years, and there's close on 68,000 other men's rights groups out there that have been saying exactly the same thing for however long they've been in existence. The changes must be of such a nature that Section 7, uh, section seven has changed around we need to absolutely define the child's rights. Please go and watch the videos that I've done around that. The child must have daily physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual contact care, guardianship and maintenance with, by and of both parents at all times. Simple. Not open to discussion, not open to negotiation. It must be absolutely defined. Uh, section 19, 20, 21. Gone, goodbye, have a nice day. We're not interested in the story any longer. Section 19, 20, and 21 must be removed. And uh, it must be amalgamated into Section 18 and fleshed out under Section 18, which says to us, uh, and it needs to be fleshed out, that says that both parents are jointly, equally, severably uh, responsible for Emotional, psychological, spiritual, physical, contact care, guardianship and maintenance of their biological child at all times. That definition covers biological parents. It co covers parents under the, uh, under, uh, who are LGBT uh, parents and it uh, covers adoptive parents. The Children's Act per se may under no circumstances have any reference or bias towards one parent over the other. It's unconstitutional, guys. You just can't do that. Okay. The other thing that needs to be done, parental alienation must be criminalized. It must carry an automatic... Um, Arrest and charge for emotional, psychological, and unfortunately, physical and sexual abuse as well of the child. Not only the alienator, okay, but the alienator's lawyers, advocates, psychologists, social welfare workers, public prosecutors, family advocate, uh, magistrates and judges must be held directly responsible for aiding and abetting 
the alienating parent in parental alienation syndrome. They must be criminally charged. They must be criminally prosecuted. They must receive the maximum sentence. And the professionals that are involved, cheers, have a nice life, so long, and thanks for all the good times and playing with us. We are not interested in your story any longer. If you, as a lawyer or a psychologist or a social welfare worker, do not know what parental alienation is, then guess what? What the bloody hell are you doing in this industry in the first place? Not interested in your story. We're not interested in your, in your excuses any longer. Uh, mediation must be made mandatory. It must have occurred within 90 days of separation. The basis for the mediation is that we automatically assume that the children have a, fifth, a right of 50-50 contact care, guardianship and maintenance by their parents and that the parents have rights and responsibilities on a 50-50 shared equal basis of uh, contact care, guardianship and maintenance. That is undisputed. What are you going to go and mediate? You are going to go and discuss logistics and you're going to go and discuss maintenance. Maintenance is a very simple uh, a thing to work out. I do not understand why it is such a complicated thing. What does mommy earn? What does daddy earn? What does it cost to maintain the child? And a figure is derived from that. It is a very, very simple mathematical equation. Okay, if the one parent claims that they are unable to afford to pay maintenance, well then, guess what? You are clearing, declaring bankruptcy. And by default, you are not in a position to financially take care of that child. So then we now start talking about things like primary residency. And primary residency, if the one parent is claiming that they cannot afford to look after the child, should automatically default to the other parent. And then your contact rights will then have to be discussed. Okay. The thing around uh, contact, very simple. It's 50 50 from birth it's either three days on four uh, three nights three nights on four days off one week on one week off two weeks on or two weeks off not interested in the discussion if mommy is breastfeeding that's fine that's fantastic that's amazing thank you very much mommy mommy must express milk and daddy must uh, give express milk and um we must um allow for the father to fulfill his rights and responsibilities towards his child. The father is not going to be able to learn to bottle feed and change nappies unless he's allowed to bottle feed and change nappies, ladies and gentlemen. This is bloody 101 logic. Okay. The mother that is having a child for the first time in her life, where did she learn to bottle feed and change nappies and breastfeed and bathe and uh, clothe and l allow the child to sleep. How did she learn to do that seeing that she's never had a child before? So you cannot prejudice, prejudice the father if he, hasn't, if he hasn't had an opportunity to be a father. Bottom line is everybody is that the, 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 the Children's Act is so inherently and fundamentally flawed that it has got to go. The last thing I want to talk about is fake, false or, or uh, non-existent allegations of abuse. If you want to make fake, false or non-existent um, allegations of abuse, by default you are a child abuser. You are a bad parent. You are an incompetent, useless parent. Okay? And by default, you should lose your rights and responsibilities towards your child. You, along with your lawyer and advocate and psychologist and social welfare worker and mediator and um, public prosecutor and the judges and magistrates that hear and issue a protection order under fake or false pretenses must be charged for perjury under the Perjury Act. And guess what? Perjury carries a fine, a fine 
or ten years to five to ten year sentence. And we are saying, thank you very much, Mr. Lawyer and Mrs. Advocate and psychologist, for playing with that parent that has decided to issue those fake or false uh, um, um, statements. You can go and sit with your client in jail at the fullest extent of the, 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 the term allowable, which is 10 years. And you must lose your license to protect, practice law and psychology and social welfare. Simple. Not interested in playing this game with you any longer. It is that simple. Uh, please like, share and subscribe this video. Please um, uh, join the class action suit. Uh, membership compulsory, 90 bucks a month to allow us uh, to carry on with this work. And um, what was I going to say? Uh, you can like, share and subscribe the YouTube channel, Facebook, LinkedIn uh, and the Google page. As well as um, if you need additional assistance, you can either go to www um f4j the number 4j.co.za uh the link to the whatsapp group the support group is on the website so you can go there and you can uh, you can email me on info at f4j.co.za we now have a qualified uh, uh law lecturer um ass assisting us with um preparing parents that want to represent themselves so that they can do this and you'd probably do a far better job because you have a vested interest in the success of the outcome. Um, have a fantastic day. Love you all.